In this video tutorial, we're going to look at present value, um, learn how to calculate present value of a sum of money that we're going to either need to spend or receive in the future. And we're also going to explore the relationship between interest rate and present value. Present value basically, it tells us the current value or the value today of some money that we're going to need to pay in the future or that we're going to receive in the future. And I like to think of it as the amount of money we'd have to deposit now if we wanted to end up with a certain amount of money in the future, if we knew the interest rate. So to start with this, I like to figure out first, or look it up, whatever, to see what the amount of money is that we're going to have or receive in the future. So the example I'd like to use is imagine that you'd like to have $5,000 saved by the time you graduate from college so that you can take a trip. Maybe you need an airplane ticket and some spending money. And so let's say that you'd like to have $5,000 by the end of the next four years, let's assume we're four years from the end of college, which I know many of you aren't, but let's say four years. And we found a place where we can invest our money at an interest rate of 10%. So we're gonna call that future balance of $5,000, we're gonna call it X. Our number of years, we're gonna call it N, and our interest rate, we're gonna call it R. Sometimes the interest rate is called I, but the book example for this particular example used R, and I'm just going to be consistent. But I and R are pretty much interchangeable. So how much money would you need to put in the bank right now if you could earn 10% per year and you had four years to achieve $5,000? The formula for this is the inverse of the formula that you can use for future value. What we do is we take X and instead of multiplying it by 1 plus the interest rate, we're going to divide by 1 plus the interest rate. And we're going to use the number of years as the exponent. And that allows it to show the effects of compounding. So we're going to start with our $5,000. And we're going to divide it by 1 plus our interest rate raised to the power of n. And that shows us that we need... $3,415.07 today, if we put that in the bank at 10% interest, at the end of four years, we'll have $5,000. The amount that we need to invest today, that is present value, is going to depend really heavily on the rate of interest that we can earn. I'm going to scroll down. The higher the rate of interest we can earn, the less money we're going to need to deposit now, the lower the present value. Let's look at an example, or let's run an example and do a chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate present value of $5,000 at each of these interest rates from 0 to 50%. And we're going to look at the present value of that under a variety of different circumstances. So if we're earning an interest rate of 0%, our present value is going to be equal to $5,000 divided by 1 plus 0% raised to the n power of 4. 1 plus 0% raised to the 4 is equal to 1, mathematically. So our answer is $5,000. If we're not going to earn any interest and we want to have $5,000 in 4 years, we need to deposit $5,000 today. We could go through this and do every single one independently, but what we're going to do is use some of the brilliant functions of Excel to get us there without much work. We're going to do that by using a combination of absolute and relative references. So if we want to look at present value of $5,000 at a variety of interest rates, our present value, I'm sorry, our future value of $5,000 is going to be the same. We want to know that $5,000 at all of our interest rates. So I'm going to give my $5,000 an absolute reference. Then I'm going to divide it by 1 plus my interest rate. No absolute reference because I want to see through each line, right, each row in this column. I want to have it reference each of these individual different interest rates. And I'm going to raise it to the power of n of my number of years. And my number of years is a constant, so I can give that an absolute reference. So if we're going to earn 1% interest, we're going to need to invest $4,804.90. That will get us $5,000 at the end of five years. So once I have my formula, you can see it up here in the formula box, and I've got an absolute reference on my 5,000, and I've got an absolute reference on my number of years. 
All I have to do is double click on the handle and it'll pull down, it'll automatically calculate as far down as its adjacent column. If I format these numbers, it'll look a little bit more meaningful. I'm just going to leave it at just dollars. And we can see, as we'd expect, if we can earn 50% interest, our present value is the smallest, right? We only need $988 today to, save, to have $5,000 in the future if we're earning 50% interest. Looking at this in graphic form is particularly useful. We can see that as our discount rate increases, present value decreases. We'll call this present value of $5,000 at various discount rates. This is my present value. This is my discount rate. Discount rate and interest rate are synonymous in present value problems, so we call them the same thing. There's our chart. I will make it a little bit taller. And I will put it in place. And what I want us to understand from this, or be able to do, is to be able to use this formula to calculate the present value of a lump sum and I want you to understand the relationship between the discount rate or the interest rate that we have and our present value. Basically, the larger the discount rate, the less we need to invest today to have a certain amount in the future. So we can say it another way, the greater the discount rate, the larger the present value.